What's up, party people in the place to be? It's your boy, the BKMC, the MCEO, Talib Kweli. Welcome to another wonderful and fantastic episode of the world's best podcast, The People's Party, as usual. And as always, I have my lovely and talented and thoughtful and thought-provoking and funny and hilarious co-host, best co-host in the game. Give it up for Jasmine Lee in the place to be. What up, Jasmine? What's up? What's up? I'm feeling great today. What's going on over there in Los Angeles? Uh, I'm losing my double chin over here, so that's what's okay. going on for me. Okay, that's <laughs> that's the snapback. They call that the snapback. You know yes, what I'm saying? Yes, yes. You snap I'm trying it back. to snap well, my chin back. <laughs> 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 well, look, Jasmine, today's guest has been a long time coming. This guest is one of the first guests that we thought of when we said it's time for us to talk to people who influence and shape the culture. And um, this man is my brother. This man is my family. Um, usually I read the career highlights of a guest, but if I were to read this man's career highlights, I think we would run out of time. So I'm just going to try to keep the intro short because I want to get into it. We are talking about one of the most, if not the most prolific producers in hip hop history. This man's fingerprints is all over the culture. One half of, of you know, he worked with MF Doom or Mad Villain, uh, worked with Freddie Gibbs, uh, professionals with his brother oh no liberation with me j lib champion sound with j dilla he's produced with kanye snoop dogg erica badu common um i'm just i'm gonna name a couple of the albums the unseen in 2000 quasimodo champion sound mad villainy of course pinata with freddie gibbs bandana with freddie gibbs but i've been hanging out with this man lately and when he walks into a room it's like mystical, it's like magical. The way that people respond to this man, because he's rarely seen, he's very elusive. The way that people respond when he walks in the room is like, it's like seeing a unicorn. This is the last <laughs> black unicorn. When you talk about true geniuses in hip hop, people who, who know exactly what their thing is, true visionaries, true eclectic people who have found their lane, this man's name is at the top of the list. He's loved, he's beloved, he's an original. The Wire magazine once wrote, described him as the guardian of yesterday for the music lovers of tomorrow we are talking about the bad kid the loop digger the beat conductor we got otis jackson aka mad lib in the building give it up for mad lib on the people's party yes. thank you, welcome welcome thank you thank you guys yes. good to be here how you that feeling great huh? intro great intro man <laughs> <laughs> i'm feeling feeling good a little woozy from last night. Are you still woozy. faded from last night a little bit? <laughs> yeah, I'm still a look. I, I had fun last night. I haven't been out like I haven't been out like a year, man. Hey man, COVID life, man. We out here getting COVID tested. Shout out to Team yeah, Chappelle. Yeah. Um, we all got COVID tested. We all partied into the wee hours of the night. And now we up early in the morning doing interviews just for you, the people, because this is the best Thank podcast you. in the world. Yes. yes sir. No yes, doubt. Sir. Um, now you and I flew here together. And I just put out a book called Vibrate Higher. And on this yeah. book, in this book, I have a chapter called Shadows of Tomorrow. And it details our first time working together. Um, so I want to thank you for being someone who was inspired my life so much that when I told my story, I had to include a whole chapter on you. That's crazy, man. Thank you so much. I was reading it yesterday. It's a great book. No doubt. I appreciate That's it. That's crazy. It's an honor. You know? No doubt. Um, now, you grew up in Oxnard, California, and I would venture to say that you and your crew, the people that you made music with, put Oxnard on the map in a hip-hop way. Um, it's a city that's often associated with, with the beach, and you know people think of it like a hippie vibe, but, but you grew up in an Oxnard that was very much uh, afflicted by gangbanging culture. Um, oh, yeah. What was it like growing up there as a young... You referred to yourself as a black hermit. How did you... <laughs> How did you steer clear of that sort of gang banging that was going on in Oxnard? A shout out to Med and Anderson Pack and yeah, all the yeah, other yeah. Oxnard representatives. Anderson Pack, yeah. Growing up in Oxnard was kind of crazy, you know, a lot of gang banging. But I, I was I was scared of all that. So I just mm. I, when I was young, I just did music because my pops was a musician. So that's mm. all I did since I was a kid. You know, I mean just music, music, music. So I just mm. stayed in the house and made records. I mean, uh, made beats try to play keyboards and things. My pops would take me to the studio with him. So that's what kind of kept me away from it, you know. Pops, 
always going with my pops and listen to his music studios and things. Um, people may not know, the casual Madeline fan may not know that you play so many different instruments. Um, you got yeah. that from growing up in that home, playing every different type of instrument, or at least picking it up and trying it? Just trying. I, I could put together stuff like a rhythm section. I'm not a great soloist or anything. More mm -hmm. like a rhythm section, but I you know, learned that from my uncle, John Faddis, who was mm -hmm. also a jazz trumpeter, played with Dizzy Gillespie and all that. Yeah. And, uh, my, my pops, my mom's wrote my dad, my mom wrote my dad's music, so... Right. I, mean, wow. I guess that's where it comes from. You know? well, definitely shout out to Otis Jackson Sr. And uh, yes, uh, definitely a big rest in peace to your mother, Dora Jackson. Uh, Thank you. Great Thank songwriter. You. Um, Thank you. When I was doing my research, I find it funny that it's a lot of musicians named Otis. So yeah. it's like when your name is Otis, it's like your parents are just preparing you wow. for a life as a musician. Yeah. That was my dad's name too. So. Mm-hmm. I'm a junior. My son's a third, you know. Oh, does he, he does play music. music? He does music as well? Yeah, he does a little bit. More in the video game, like programming and all that. Yeah, it's, it's in the name. It's in the name. Shout out to <laughs> Otis's. Um, <laughs> vinyl records have been so instrumental to your career. Um, it's rumored that you sampled your first record at 11 years old. Is that true? And yeah, it's, it's very true. It, Oh, wow. Yes, you start out young. And do you remember your very first sample? Yeah, I mean, I took my pop's collection. I was in trouble for taking this collection to the room. Uh, <laughs> doing it to death album by JB's. Mm. Just, you know, doing it to death, that album. That was what I right, that dun, dun, gravitated dun, dun, dun. to. Hey, yeah. Yeah, the Dilla. Yeah. Yeah, that's the first. That's actually the first stuff I worked with. Mm. I remember that very well. No doubt. Now, your brother is Oh No, the rapper, yeah. producer, partner with Alchemist, partner with you in the Professionals uh, album. Um, I got to say, man, um, Oh No, particularly in the last later part of my career, has been one of the chief architects of my sound. Um, mm -hmm. He's given me some incredible records. Um, when oh, it comes to video games, that man is like, you know, you go Genius. over his crib, he got every, contro every controller <laughs> you can have. Genius. He designs video games. Um, what's your musical relationship like with oh no um i look at us the same man like we do the mm. same thing that's how i've always looked at it when i leave when i leave my room he go he go up in there and make mm. beats on my stuff so that's how he we trade off you know basically see i look at him as like me you know what I mean? same yeah thing. your parents maybe, did a fantastic maybe, maybe job better. I don't know. yeah yeah i uh, mean look i i gotta say i mean you know that's your brother so you already know but you know, mm -hmm. everybody knows uh, in hip hop how prolific Mad Lib is and stuff and that. But mm -hmm. hey, man, I, I, you, you you right. Like, I might pick yeah. an old no beat over a Mad Lib beat on, exactly. on, on a given day. You know what I'm saying? I like that. I'm with that. You know I mean? No doubt. <laughs> no doubt. Shout out to Oh yeah. No. He's as great um, as anybody. Um, now, when I first came out on Raucous, mm -hmm. there was a group making noise called Loop Pack. Oh. Um, it's your Mad Lib's first group. Shout out to Jack Wildchild. Yeah. And yeah. Jack always supports me on Twitter. And so does Miles Brown. People might not know that Jack mm -hmm. uh, Wildchild from Lupac is Miles Brown's father, uh, Miles from uh, Blackish. Yeah. And uh, oh. shout out to DJ Rome, who's wow. also uh, through Ono, oh done a lot of cuts on my projects. Um, but when nice. I first came in the game, um, Lupac was cracking. And that album y'all wow. dropped on Stone's Throw had so many records on it, man. And... Um, uh, your dad, but your before you got to Stone's Throw, your dad uh, helped you put the album out, right? The first project. Yeah, put our uh, first 12-inch out. Uh, he just saw that we were trying to do something, and he got he basically got me a studio when I was about 16. Got me a studio where we could all record at, Mad, Wild Child, all of us wow. going there anytime. time. You know, we kept submitting music to him, and like, go back to the studio, keep working. But, you know, after about five years... He was like, yo, let's let's put a record out, you know? Because mm. he, he believed in it. And from there, you know what I mean? That's dope. You get the independent spirit and that sort of existing outside of the music business, doing it yourself early yeah. from your pops. Yeah, because he put his records out independently. Mm. You know, we had about five, five, six. The fact that your father had um, built a record because he saw your interest in that, that's why it's so important to have arts in the school because you just said... Yes that the reason why you weren't into the gang banging and stuff like that, because you had other things to do. And if they yes. had more artistic activities for children to do, then it would be a lot less gang banging out there. 
True, because I noticed a lot of my friends that weren't into what I was doing, they were just getting in trouble, you know. Mm-hmm. Cousins, you know, I mean, shooting at each other, whatever, you know. Mm. Yeah, man. Um, on that Loop Pack album, the, the Stone Store one, um, there's a record that, all of the songs are good, but there's a record that's indelible, that stands the test of time for me, that I still play when I'm DJing or whatever, and that's when I'm on yeah. the mic. And I remember hey. when I, hearing that record being like, ooh, I wish I could have made a record like that. So <laughs> tell me what you remember about making that song in particular. I don't remember anything else. <laughs> you know what I mean? Was, no yes, uh, living the life. Know. But that was, uh, that was when I was still living in Oxnard. And, uh, you know, we were just recording tons of material. Mm. That was just one of the ones that stuck out. We recorded like 300 songs. Mm. And that was just one that stood out, you know what I mean? Like uh, it's actually like some surf music. It was like a surf rock record. You know what I mean? Yeah, that don't do don't, 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 <laughs> yeah, don't, but don't, yeah. It was kind of catchy to me. So you know, what I mean, threw the EPMD drums under that. So what you saying type stuff? You know? Yeah, man. Yeah. Shout out to EPMD, DJ Scratch that's, that's, and all that. It's one of the ones people remember from Loop Pack. You know? it's yeah, it's a good one. one. It's yeah. a good song. We talk a lot on this show about independent productions versus the power of a big label. You connected with Stone Throw run by Peanut Butter Wolf early in your career. What do you remember about first meeting Peanut Butter Wolf? Uh, he was a great beat, beat maker himself back then. I heard a lot of his work with Cool Keith and uh, great DJ. You know what I mean? And he, he heard our music. He was just really into it. He called my pops up. And try to sign us from there, you know what I mean? Mm. We just like all the same type of music, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Basically. Yeah. But uh, he's a cool, cool brother. Yeah, the documentary, I'm a part of the documentary, of Vinyl Ways a Ton. Um, yeah. I think that documentary, that film, um, it does a, a very good job of capturing who Peanut Butter Wolf is and it capturing sort of the rise and the prominence and and him coming from charisma to working with you and just all the other cats. I don't even, there's so many other cats on Stone's Throw. That, <laughs> I, God, I don't even know. Everybody, knows. you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, everybody, yeah. But I think the fans of you and Stone's Throw, because Stone's Throw is obviously a storied label, um, want to know, is was there a falling out with you and Stone's Throw? Or what's the situation with you and Stone's Throw? Uh, yeah, I ain't going to mention anything, but yeah, you know. Okay. I just moved on. I moved on. I had to. Okay. Figure out some better business options, you know what I mean? No doubt. We all That's have to do that. that you know as, I mean? as artists, we, 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 we often outgrow situations. And it's like, mm-hmm. I, yes. you know, you spoke about Wolf as who he is. And we good, good ear. Y'all like the same music. I have people in my life that I outgrew business-wise, but I have nothing bad to say about them when it comes to the music. Right, yeah. I have nothing bad to say. You know what I mean? It was yeah. a good time at the time. Keep it moving, you know, trying mm-hmm. to keep rising. You know? No doubt. Now, I formed a very inspirational sort of mentor working relationship with Gil Scott Heron. Um, wow. I feel like you have a similar musical relationship with the great legendary Melvin Van Peoples. Um, his funny. spoken word and him, his, his, his voice is featured on a lot of your records. Um, yes. Can you tell us about uh, Ain't Supposed to Die a Natural Death, which I believe is the first Melvin Van Peoples record you, you heard, right? Um, yes. Uh, Tell us about how he influenced you, particularly when it came to the Quasimodo project. Man, this is poetry alone, you know what I mean? Mm. I, I basically, a lot of that stuff was written by him, you know, a lot of my rhymes. So he's like, mm. he was always the third member of the crew. Even mm. when I met him, he was like, yeah, I'm the third member, you know. It's just his poetry, you know what I mean? Mm. You know? That's an OG. Yeah. I like this. I like this so deep that I took some of that and incorporated it into my rhymes and stuff. You know? mm. And I love all his movie work. It was just different back then. He was one of the first black independent. That's right. Directors, you know what I mean? So I respect him from that. That's right. Now, when yeah, it comes yeah. to Quasimodo, um, I find that people often harp on the the myth, the mythology behind Quasimodo, like Madlib was high on these mushrooms and he did a whole album of mushrooms, um, <laughs> you know, but I'm more interested in the, the technical musical aspects of Quasimodo about you being an MC. Like I'm a fan of Madlib as an MC, you know, we got to rap together on, on J-Lib, um, you know, I'm a fan of of you, your voice as an MC, but I'm also a fan of Quasimodo and, and, and Lord Quas <laughs> definitely feel like a different person. <laughs> Um, is Laura Quaz and you the same person? And is it more just about a technical thing? 
Or is it just, is it really, do you have to go into a whole different personality? I have to go into a whole different personality. It's technical. Mm. I can't even do that anymore. You know what I mean? <laughs> to even get to There's that no point, more. I can't. Quasimodo I can't, records? Nah, it's done. You know what I mean? Mm. I mean, when Dilla died, I stopped rapping. I lost some. I lost mm. something, you know what I mean? Mm. So, but yeah, Quas was just something fun for me to do because I didn't like my voice anyway. So mm. I just did some psychedelics, which you don't have to do to get there. But I did that and tried I to love create your the, voice. Weird, the weirdest music I could do. You know? mm. Yes. So when you did you do that album in all in one sitting, or you just did mushrooms every time you recorded did mushrooms a song? every time? It took about a week. About a week mm -hmm. to do that record. Yeah. I never Love intended mushrooms. to come out. I just did it to, for myself, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Peanut Butter Wolf heard it, and then you know, convinced me to put it out. I, I was never gonna put that out. I like I like Otis Jackson voice. I like your Mad Lib voice a lot, but I also am a huge fan of um, you creating these aliases and these characters and these fictional cool. musicians. Like even with the yesterday's new new quintet, what made mm -hmm. you decide that you needed to do that to get your music out? Because I'm mad elusive. You know what I mean? I couldn't. Mm find players to play with me. So I had to try to make a way to do it myself. So I just, I stopped doing hip hop for like a couple of years and just practice on instruments. Mm -hmm. Right when my stuff was, you know, when Quasimodo was out and all that. So mm. Wolf was kind of scared, you know what I mean? I stopped with the <laughs> hip hop and just try to do jazz and R&B and all that type of stuff for a few years. Right. Pick up instrument every month, a different instrument. Now. I feel like you said Quasimodo is a different person and you lean into that with songs like MHB and songs like Bad Character. Um, mm -hmm. It's like Quas is like, nah, I'm a, I'm a bad dude, bro. Like I'm not here to be a role model nigga. Like yeah. I'm here to, to, to have sex and do drugs and have fun. But, <laughs> but. Who is Quasimodo, he here for that, Tyler? I mean, Who you know, I mean, we all human beings. We all got vices. I don't trust you if you don't got no vices. But it's still the, the, the consciousness the need to speak on a community and the need to speak on a hip hop community still seeps through like Return of the Loop, Loop Digger and Loop Diggers, mm -hmm. that those 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 songs, just you breaking down why jazz to, is so important. But for me, as you know, I'm known as a conscious MC. Mm -hmm. um, the song Low Class Conspiracy. Oh, yeah. Um, in the Guardian interview you just recently did, you said rap music right now should be more like public enemy stuff, but it's just not there. I wish it was more like it was in the early days when I was coming up. Um, yeah. where, what's your take on the current state of police brutality and conversations surrounding um, defunding the police? Um, because when I did a, a DJ set playing mm -hmm. conscious, like anti-establishment music, I had to play that low class cons conspiracy. And I don't think people always think about Mad Lib or Quasimodo as that type of artist, but I do. Well, I've been through that pr police brutality, so I know. First hand, living in Oxnard, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, I've, I've had a lot of things happen, you know? Like, mm -hmm. My pops had to, pops wanted to blow up the precinct or something, you know what I mean? Like, mm. Cops, cops is crazy in Oxnard, but I mean, everybody goes through, everybody black goes through that. You know? That's right. You know I mean, so you got to speak on it a little bit, bring some awareness. That's know? right. I find that the best hip hop, I mean, I'm, I'm not a, I'm not a rap snob. I'm a snob about a bunch of shit. But I'm yeah. I'm not a I'm not a rap snob. I listen to trap music. I listen to decadent music. I listen mm -hmm. to all types of things. But I find I make the best. I, I see. I've I've, I've heard some <laughs> Mad Lib trap beats. <laughs> but I feel Been like the best that. type of hip hop always is just the hip hop that deals with the consciousness and that that stays around Me too. forever. Yeah. It's Public Enemy. Like I was proud when that stuff came out. Yeah, you know I mean, it's just taught you things. The new hip hop doesn't really teach you anything. You know? Yeah. Teach you mm. take pills or something, but I mean, it don't mm. really teach you, you know values or anything you know? yeah i mean there's probably some out there but but i don't you know i ain't seen it yeah well i mean you know i've you got kendrick and j cole leading the pack you know in terms of hip-hop as far as the mcs people checking for um yeah i you, mean in the I, mainstream I heard, though it was more it was more in the yeah, mainstream yeah. back back in the days you know mm -hmm. yeah it was they it had was, different different things now it's just one thing you know I mean? that's right you could go to fresh fest and you could see houdini do Houdini yeah. type of music, recipes to Jalil, or you could see De La Soul, or you could see yeah. NWA, all yes. on the same bill. That's that's how it's supposed to be. You know? Yeah. But the record yeah. companies trying to make it a certain way. You know, I mean, it's because they they yeah. want the popular hip hop to be yeah. pushed in your um, face, and right. that's not even what started hip hop. And that is the difference. It's not that 
there's so many more mumble rappers now than it was back in right. the day is the fact that right. it's switched sides with what's mainstream mm -hmm. and what's not. Right. Mm. That's, that's well, you know, sex sells, violence sells. So the more gangster yeah. you are, the more sex, the more violence, the more talk about capitalism and how much money you get, in, the more the, the powers that be are going to support your project and push your project. Yeah. Which is why, yeah. I you know, people like Madlib, I, I put myself in this category. I think it's braver what we do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I think it's more courageous and it's taken yeah. more of a chance um, and For sure. a greater uh, chance of, of failure um, when we right. take this path I'm, I'm, that's, that's, that's what I like yeah. take a chance yeah. of risk you know what I mean that's yeah what I mean that's about. what this whole life is about right taking a risk mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. otherwise it's boring yeah that's right now I want to go back to talking about aliases and fictional characters and being elusive and why you need felt the need to put some distance between yourself and the music business and one person who's exemplified that more than anybody is a brother to both of us that we just recently lost in the physical he's still with us in the spiritual that's the brother mf doom um yeah. we're gonna give love and flowers to mf doom um your album mad villainy with mf doom I once did a, a a radio show where you had to bring in your favorite vinyl and talk about why it inspired you. And the vinyl I brought in was was the Mad Villain joint, and um, mm. and that record was revolutionary. That record is one of the most important hip hop re releases of all time. The wow. chances you took, yeah. you took you you took risks. Y'all took chances. Yeah. Um, tell me about meeting and linking up with MF Doom and how you knew that it was time for you and Doom to collaborate on that level. Uh. I knew we needed to collab when I heard Doomsday. I didn't even know him back then. Mm. From, I mean, even the KMD stuff. Right. I didn't Is put it together. I didn't, I didn't even know that was him until later, though. Like, I didn't put it together. But when I heard that, uh, his first MF Doom record, mm -hmm. that struck me because all the beats, you know what I mean? My, that's my type of thing. His lyrics were witty, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And just music alone the type of samples he chose i know all the samples that he chose so mm. i did something i would have done in a different way yeah you both you and doom neither one of y'all scared you know you, you obviously grew up on digging in the crates and being obscure with the samples but neither one of you are scared to sample popular shit and make it your own which i find refreshing right. as well um no rules we don't have rules you know what i mean right just go by your ear that's it yeah yeah um one time I went to visit you, I believe you had a studio in Pomona, is that correct? Somewhere in LA. <laughs> somewhere, somewhere, somewhere. It was some studio you had, right? Oh, you're talking about the one in uh in the hood. That was in the hood. That when you okay. and Kanye popped up? Yeah, I, I see I didn't know Kanye was gonna be there. I just was going to visit you. And that was Echo Doom, Park. Okay. It was Echo Park. Okay, Doom mm -hmm. and Kanye was both there. And mm -hmm. me as a hip hop fan, like I, you know, I'm blessed with a certain amount of access that other people don't get. I have a very unique perspective. And I think Twitter had just started. It was like 2008, 2009, the first year of Twitter. And I was so excited that I was in the studio. I mean, who else gets to be in the studio at the same time with MF Doom, Kanye West, and Mad Lib? And was I was so trip. excited. I tweeted it. Trip. And Kanye hit me. He was like, yo, why are you telling people I'm in a studio with Doom and Mad Lib? Like, I want to be in control of how I release that information. And I took the tweet <laughs> down. Um, but um, I told Mad Lib this last night and he, Mad Lib, he was like, I'm, I'm glad he did that. So so, yeah. so break down to, for the people watching why you glad he did that. I mean, uh, you're not wrong for doing what you did. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. like, I mean, he's just a he's private type of person like me. You know right, I mean? right. So... Cause, he, Cause there was a crowd outside, you know what I mean? When people found out he was there, you know what I mean? A bunch of people outside, but um, I mean, go either way. You, you ain't wrong, you know what I mean? Right. Now, I mean, I, 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 but I appreciated the lesson because y'all are visionaries, and I'm a visionary myself. But um, I'm more of a, I'm more engaging with the people. You, you said in the Guardian interview as well. You was like, you'll never find me arguing on Twitter with nobody. I prefer to remain a mystery. And um, yeah. There's a science to that. I'm I'm someone who will argue on Twitter. That's Sometimes cool. to the point where they kick me off of Twitter. You know what I'm saying? That's cool. <laughs> that's, that's cool. Like, yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I, I like I like reading all that stuff. You know. You go in. I'm glad I get to talk to talk his to you papers. about it in real life. You go in. You go in. Like, that's entertainment for me. You know what I mean, I'm in, it's in my house. It's, like, it's interesting. 
No doubt. But yeah, I'm not a social media type of dude. I'm just background guy. You know what I mean? No doubt. No doubt. Yeah, talk to me the old school way. No doubt. We gotta uh, find you first though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you always find me. Like no doubt, because I, I make it happen. Yeah. Now Dilla was also recipes to Dilla. Um, yeah. Dilla was also elusive. Dilla didn't mm. fuck with people like that. When I worked with Dilla, I had to go to Detroit. You know, he sent Frank and Dink to pick me up. It wasn't no sending beats through the email, um, yeah. none of that. I want to thank you for asking me to be a part of Champion Sound. It's one of the highlights of my career. Um, I had to. You've compared uh, Doom to Charlie Parker. You've compared Dilla to Coltrane. You've compared yourself mm. to Thelonious Monk. Um, what chambers did Dilla open up for you, and how did y'all connect spiritually? Because I feel like there's a real spiritual connection with you and Dilla. It's something that's just unspoken, because when I met him, it was like we knew each other for years. Like, me and him could sit in the room, not even talk, and just still connect musically. Like, it's weird. Mm -hmm. Like, on some alien shit or something. Mm. Um, same type of energy, basically. You know what I mean? Yeah. Same energy. Like, when I met him, it was like, just pulled me to him, like, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. without, even, without even thinking about it. It's like we knew each other for years, but we didn't. You know? Yeah. A Quest Love tells a story, I think it's in that same documentary, when he says Dilla was telling him about Loop Pack and telling him about Mad Lib, and he was like, yo, I feel like he's making these, he's talking to me. I feel like that's he's making the, these beats for me. I was. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> like, that's that's my beat brother right there. He's, he's mm -hmm. king of the beats to me, so, you know, I was basically trying to impress him, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I just had one more question about MF Doom. Um, why do you think MF Doom's lyricism and skill weren't fully appreciated in his lifetime? A lot of people don't think. Like, if you think, you know how great he is. You know what I mean, you got to have some smarts. You know what I mean, a lot of people just want to hear dumbed down music. I think, I don't know. I think it's because he's so witty. Some people can't catch you. you know? Yeah, he was... Um he was the king of non sequitur rap. He, um, it was like a stream of consciousness thing, where it's like, you know, you could hear the God body influence, you could hear the yeah. hip hop influence, you could hear the the. Uh, he loved pop culture. He loved comics and movies and TV shows and all that. But he also didn't take himself too seriously. It was also fun. That's that's my yeah. brother, man. I miss him. Yeah. I miss both my brothers. Like, no Dilla doubt. And Doom. Rest in peace to Doom. Rest in peace to Dilla. Word is born. Um, now, yeah. Madlib, I want to thank you for. Um, doing liberation with me you had sent me a bunch of beats i'm ready for the next one i'm ready for the yeah next people one. don't know we got the we got the liberation two done yeah. but we gonna we gonna release yeah. it after this this black star which you, we gonna get into that black star later on that's but right. um that's right that's i want to right. thank you for doing liberation with me um i don't know if i've ever got to share this with you but it really was a reset for me and as a career booster for me because um at that point i had just come off a beautiful struggle and beautiful struggle was it was featuring Anthony Hamilton and Faith Evans and Mary G. Blige right and up. the Neptunes. And, and people were saying that I was selling out because it was presented uh, on like a mainstream major lab, label thing. And so when I got with, with Mad Lib to do Liberation, not only did people start to be like, okay, he's back. And I, I don't apologize for Beautiful Struggle. They was just lost in the sauce to people. Who, yeah, that was a great album. Thank you, brother. I, I think it was great too. But, but Liberation brought some fans back to me who stopped fucking with me, and it gave me some new fans. Like, what I didn't realize was Beautiful Struggle and some of the other things I did for fans put me in a box of, well, that's a mainstream rapper. I still saw myself as the young kid who worked at the bookstore who just got signed to Raucous. I didn't realize, okay, well, you've been on MTV, you've been on BET, you've traveled the world. You're different now. People look at, even if you don't see yourself different, people see you different, right? So I remember people being yeah. like, yo, I didn't know Quali would, would would do something underground, like some Mad Lib type shit. I'm like, why, why wouldn't I do that? That seems like exactly something I would do. So I want to thank you for, for, for giving me that chamber. Thank you, man, because it helped my career, too. And I, re I respect that you do different things. You can't just do one thing, wait for people to catch up. Like, you got to do that style, the commercial style. This, that, that's what's great about you. You know what I mean? Jack of all trades. Any trades. style. Any style, yeah. Yeah. Just as you were rising to hip-hop prominence, you took a pause from the rap albums to remix tracks for Blue, Mo Blue Notes. One of my favorite albums of all time. Wow. Thank you. It was also the closest you've done to a pure jazz project. How did mm -hmm. that come about, and is that something that you could see yourself doing again? Yeah, it came about from uh, Eli Wolf, who was the uh, A&R at that time. 
he was really into my music. And he brought up the idea for me to go into the vaults and just pick anything I want and see what I could do with it. Mm. And that was a dream for me, you know what I mean? Blue That's Note. That's crazy. Like, my uncle wanted to be on Blue Note. So he went in, mm. He's a jazz musician. He wasn't even on Blue Note. But right. Was he salty at you? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, he's sampling and looping and he got a Blue Note? What the hell? <laughs> Probably. He's tired of his... Uh, he teaches. He's tired of his students coming up to him talking about me. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah. they let me go on the vaults, and I just picked anything I want. I picked the that stuff that I like from the eras I like. You know what I mean? Mm. Or Silver to Wayne Shorter, you know, all that type of stuff. Yeah, man. And I actually had it. I actually had a different album. I, was, I had a week to turn in the album, and uh. I was almost done. I was mixing, and the way I mix, I don't really save. And Peanut Butter Wolf kicked the cord out, and I had to start over. Like I had like four days to do the record. I always wanted to be in a jazz band. Your name, your name is fitting for it, <laughs> right? Jasmine Lee's Jazz Band, the Jasmine Lee Quartet. I know, Lee and the thing, uh, the thing is that I played flute, and they didn't allow flute oh, nice. in jazz band, so I was gonna have. Wait, to you ain't never seen Anchorman? Jackson. They you went in our Anchorman? school. He played a jazz in, flute. in our school. They would not let exactly. They wouldn't let they wouldn't let flute players, flautists, be in jazz band. So I had tried to learn the baritone sax, but it was so heavy. Sense. So that doesn't I make, make sense. Sure. That doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense, jazz. right? You know what I mean? Like flute is one of the main things I love in jazz. You hear right. that, Mr. Norman? You, know I mean? you could be a pine you know piper I mean? and all that with a flute. <laughs> <laughs> I, exactly. I'm gonna, town? Listen, I'm going to start back playing and I'm going to join a, ba- a jazz band. It's not too late. It's not too late. I, I need a, I need a uh, flautist. All right. Mm-hmm. All right. I'm coming. <laughs> you know I mean? a <laughs> <laughs> um, I want to thank you again. I have so much. I have so many things to thank you for, man. Um, That's crazy. Me I was too. working on an eardrum album. You produced. People don't know that you produced Everything Man, Soon the New Day. Uh, Eat to Live off the Eardrum album. Soon a new day is featuring Nora Jones. I'm proud of the fact that I, I got that Mad Lib and Nora Jones to work together. Shout out to Quest Love. He hooked that up. I love that song. It's a good one, bro. It's a good one. That's a trip. Um, you produced large chunks of the ecstatic Yasin Bey's uh, fourth studio album. Um, it may be my favorite album. One of my favorite yeah. Yasin Bey songs of all time is uh, featuring Slick Rick, Auditorium. Ooh, uh, yeah, you know. Tell me about that's, making that song with him. I'm proud of that. Yeah, uh, mm. that's, that was basically an older beat too. It's from the Indian beat conductor record. Yeah. So it's a, so it's a trip that he picked that. You know, it was already out and people loved it more when he did the song over. You know what I mean? So yeah. It was a trip. This is two of my favorite rappers too. You know what I mean? Slick Rick. Yeah. Yasin. So Slick yeah, Rick is Yasin's was, favorite as well. Right. Yeah. I'm proud of all the work I did with you guys. You know what I mean? No doubt. No yeah. doubt. I'm proud of working with you too, it's a, bro. It's an honor. Um, you know what I mean? The other day it was Badu's birthday. We yeah. sent a video to Erica Badu, the queen, uh, wishing her happy birthday. She is a true yeah. legend. Um, yeah. Yes, she tell is. Tell me about working with her on The Healer, which is one of her best songs out of a catalog of incredible songs. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what to say about that. Yeah, she sent it to me. I was tripping. Um she, I didn't really work on it with her. She just took the beat and, and did her thing. About a week later, I, I stayed at her house for a few days, and, you know, hanging out with Sarah and all them, and we just building. Oh, out in Dallas? Yes. And then we were okay. b- doing different songs, and I mean, songs that didn't even come out. And just, you know, yeah. it's a trip. I get nervous around her, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, we all do. You know what I mean? We all do. That's a, oh, yeah, she, that's a true, true visionary. Just cool to work with her, man. And see how she lives and all that. No doubt. Pos- she very lives positive. Like a truly free. Yeah. Black hippie. Yeah, no doubt. Black hermit. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, the reason why I did Liberation before Eardrum is because I wanted to get Mad Lib beats on Eardrum, but you sent me so many beats at a time because you're doing so many beats at a time and you don't just do beats you your your beats when you send people often centered around themes so it's like okay these beats all have yeah. like a japanese voice in them or these are all yeah. you know black exploitation samples or this is mad lib in africa or here's mad lib in brazil 
Um, is that just a reflection of how your mind works? Yeah. Musically schizophrenic, I guess. You know what I mean? Just musically. <laughs> musically schizophrenic. That's you not a I mean? that's a great thing in music. Uh because you know, I start the day off doing a jazz record. About an hour later I just want to do hip hop, you know what I mean? And mm -hmm. a few hours later I'm doing some Brazilian live joints, whatever, you know, that's how I work. It's the same way I listen to music, you know. I don't just listen to one thing, I listen to all types of stuff. Is the drums your favorite in instrument? Probably, yeah. Mm. So that's the only thing I really know how to play well, you know what I mean? Mm. Cause I know you get busy on them drums. Yeah, yeah, I can do a little something. Something about you <laughs> Oscar boys with them drums. Spiritual. Be spiritual with it. <laughs> no doubt. Now I received a batch of Mad Lib Beats right after you uh, dropped that Bandana album. Um, and I flew out to Barcelona where my brother Yasin Bey is, is at. And I've seen, I've seen, I've one seen. thing about Yasin Bey is like, when he was working with Dilla, he only wanted to work with Dilla. When he started working yeah. with Mad Lib, he only wanted to work with Mad Lib. And we've had several <laughs> false starts with the Black Star album. But one thing that's consistent the, for the last 10 years, 15 years since we dropped the album is, Yasin has for a long time been like, the next Black Star album has to be over all Mad Lib beats. So that's when crazy. I would be out in Paris or Amsterdam or Barcelona, uh, hanging out with y'all, seeing I'd play in Mad Lib beats, and then we start to we start to work on this new Black Star album, um, and so I just appreciate us being able to work together in this capacity, and I'm looking forward to yeah. getting this Black Star album out for the people, man. Black Star Mad Lib yeah. is gonna be a hell of a situation. Uh, it's an honor. To, you know, <laughs> first album is classic, you know what I mean? I, mm -hmm. uh, all the producers on that. So it's an honor for me just to be doing it alone. That's crazy to me. Mm. <laughs> but it came out dope. I mean, I can't wait for people to hear it. How has that process been working on the Black Star album? Is there anything you can share with us? Uh, it's been great. The only thing I got to do is find what I've used for some of the songs, you know? I'm the type of producer <laughs> that just freestyles my beats. I don't even mm -hmm. know what I'm doing. I just keep going. Like, you know. So I learned my lesson now, but. I used to freestyle every beat, so I don't know what the loop is, or, you know what I mean? So the hardest process of this album was just finding every loop and stuff, but after that, we're going to do good. Thank you once again. Um, I can't Thank wait. you, man. The album sounds great, you know what I mean? Yeah. I chose the right joints, the right beats, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, and I got to shout out Freddie Gibbs because- um, Lyrics, Ooh, lyrics are crazy. Oh, thank you, brother. Oh, yeah. Y'all yeah. seen make me step up my pen game. Absolutely. My kid. Um, my kids I'm no slouch with the pen already, but y'all seen make me step it up. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. No slouch. Um, I want to shout out Freddie Gibbs because the work that you did with him um, inspired me to go harder to try to get this Black Star album done. And uh, yeah. particularly Pinata and Bandana, critically acclaimed. Um, I feel like y'all both got a slew of new fans from your collaboration. Um, yeah. And people are surprised. Like, how did this... Street rapper talking about thugging and and hustling come with the jazz cat, but it seems like you and Gibbs were not surprised. So can you tell me how you met and what made y'all decide to do these projects? Both of our managers knew each other. His manager okay. Lambo and and uh, Egon, mm -hmm. and they they brought that idea up to me. I didn't think it was gonna work either because mm -hmm. he was all trap trap. You know what I mean? Okay. First album it was mostly my sound, and then he he did his thing. Mm. But the second album, I think, is more of us together, like polished. Okay. Like, I, I moved his way, and he went my way. You know what I mean? But it was easy because he's a good dude, you know, good person. Yeah, yeah. we like this. We like the same type of music. He's all into the right. old blacks. He's all into the old black exploitation stuff, like me and all that. You know? Yeah, I went to y'all show uh, right last year before the pandemic. It was a, such a fantastic, triumphant show. Nice. That was fun. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, was like, I, like, I like seeing you at my shows, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I like yeah, being yeah. there, brother. I like being there. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Now, before you um, got with Gibbs, you talked about the auditorium sample being from the, the uh, you know, was that was that one of the series, the Medicine Show series era? That was a, uh, no, that was Stone Star era. Okay. And I was just putting out the Beat Conductor records. Beat Conductor era, right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, tell me about the Medicine Show era. Like, what was that like creatively for you? That was basically for me to uh, showcase different genres. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, I put out a different record every month. One would be like a mixtape from Brazil. You know, just get cats' knowledge up on music. 
I wouldn't even put the titles. You know, you got to search for You just listen. And you gotta, I made people go search for things from old jazz to Brazil to psychedelic rock. Right. Uh, and then I did also the hip hop stuff. It was just a show I could put out a record every month, you know, and give some musical knowledge. That's that jazz upbringing. Up. Yeah. But yeah, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to, trying to do one a year forever. You know, I mean, one a month. Okay. You know what I mean? Staying busy. That's my, that's my new goal. Whether it's any, any type of music, I got hmm. stuff with a lot of people. I got indie rock records. I got a. Uh, Wow. Brazilian records. I got African record with Tony Allen on drums. R.I.P. Really? I got a, yeah. You got to play that for me today, bro. I got to hear that one. I'll see if I got it, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I got a reggae record. Uh, reggae record mm. with Dennis Al Capone, all them type of type of right. artists on the old school, old school stuff. And, uh, you ill with the reggae, too. <laughs> yes, I'm looking forward <laughs> Doing to that. Doing some industrial type rock with Thundercat, you know, all types of stuff. I want to. You said with Thundercat? Do yeah. Wow. I want to show I can, I want to show we can do any style basically, you know. Mm. Um rest in peace to Mac Miller. Rest in peace to Mac Miller, man. He's such a yes, made a, such an imprint in such a short period of time. He was so young on this game and he's one of my yeah. favorite favorite people to cool work with. Too. I, I collaborated with him a couple of times, man. He's a beautiful beautiful soul, young Malcolm. Where is Bond? Yes, sir. RIP, man. He was a good dude. Yeah, he's a great dude, great dude, man. He was a huge loss for us, and particularly yeah, that community yeah. that you're from, that L.A., Oxnard, he was a creative. Great, mm -hmm. He was a great musician, too. Any instrument. He could yeah. pick up any instrument. You know I mean? Yeah. Play Which is jazz, why he went. like jazz standards, whatever. You know what I mean? That's that's why he had, you know he was moving towards working more with you and Thundercat and Anderson Pack and people who knew that type of music. It was beautiful to see. Yeah. Yeah, he was a yeah. great musician. Yeah. Get him seeing. He was a great musician. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, Madlib, you remember when I, I interviewed you on BET? Yeah. So this is our second interview, brother. My, like... my nervous days. <laughs> 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 that was a trip. Yeah, that was a good time. I hate it. Go back and watch it on YouTube. I was having a fashion... Uh... Faux pas? <laughs> yeah. I, was, I don't know what I was thinking. I, my fashion was just not right. I, I don't. I hate the sweat. I hate the hoodie that I have on in an interview. Mad Lib is dressed fly in the motherfucker, and I got oh, on. Oh man, you good. You're good. No, you know hoodies were audacious. It was like it was like a trend at that time where people were wearing mm -hmm. like wild, colorful hoodies with words yeah, on them yeah. and shit like that. Yeah, that was I like a thing. That. Yeah, that was a I, I was style. A, yeah. It was a, that, that was, was a style, style, but it was it didn't age well. Style's okay, strange. so it's it, it's soon Talib. When people watch it back, it's gonna be fashion again. I know. Like, oh, Talib was ahead yeah. of his time. Yeah, that's how it is. You know? Yeah, man. Um, now you're definitely ahead of your time. Uh, that when when we had that session with Kanye West, he bought a bunch of beats for you from you, and I know this because it was some of those beats I was trying to use, and I couldn't use them because they were like, "Well, Kanye bought these beats." I'm like, "Well, motherfucker, when you gonna drop one of them songs? <laughs> like you bought all these that beats, man. Why are you selfish? Share the wealth." Happened, yeah. I always felt like uh, no shot to Kanye, but I felt like he bought all these beats. Because so that Madlib couldn't compete with him, like I was like he just tried to take out the competition. Oh, damn, no. He probably <laughs> just then, didn't want to share. Oh, but then one of them came out. One of them came out. Um, the No More Parties in L.A. with a uh, with a uh, Kendrick Lamar was from that session. I had that beat. I did a song to that beat. Um, but wow. do you think any of those other beats are gonna come out from that session? No, nah, no. Nah. Okay. I think he's in. I think he's in a different space now. Yeah. You know I mean? Okay. But a lot, a lot of, a lot of the bigger artists do that. A lot of the bigger artists just take the beats. A lot of the bigger artists just take the beats and they usually don't even come out. Like, you know what I mean? Mm. I've noticed that. Every time I work with artists on a big label, they'll take like, even Busta took some. He, he, I ain't heard nothing yet. Oh, shit. Well, you know, Busta's very ago. prolific too. I did a song with yeah. Busta that was on, that's supposed to be on ELE and uh, his son made the beat. And when the album came out, I didn't hear it. And uh, I talked to Busty. He was like, oh, you on the next one, God. You on the ELE. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah, he's so prolific. He probably doesn't make so many songs. You know, yeah. Get lost in the songs. I was yeah. going to say, because uh, you were talking about uh, having beats that you made a song to. So like, I guess like stealing beats or like sharing beats is kind of like with jokes. Because if you have the same joke similar to somebody, you don't want to do it. And if you have the same beat similar to right. somebody or that beat, then that's like, you know, beef. You stole my beat. So, you know, just <laughs> that's <close>. right. <laughs> it's yeah. who's first. Who's, who's first? 
Exactly. Who who that's yeah. what it goes with jokes that's sometimes too. Like whoever is. put it on TV first, that's their joke. And guess mm-hmm. whoever's beat pops off the first, like that's your beat. And just yeah. drop whatever you had before. Yeah. That's right. That's um, you made bandana on an iPad, and actually you've made almost everything over the past seven or eight years on an iPad. When the mm-hmm. equipment techniques are changing so quickly, what has helped you stay true to your vision? Um for me, it's not even the equipment. It's the it's the music that you choose to, you know, mm. basically, because I can make a beat on anything. Mm. I was just saying I use an iPad. I wasn't saying it to be like, oh, I use an iPad. I was saying don't make excuses. You know, these these dudes make excuses that they don't have equipment. Mm. But you, just, you can use anything, your iPhone. Uh, I, so iPad is better than some of the stuff people spend thousands of dollars on. Right. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. So my whole thing, my whole thing was just, yeah, don't make excuses. That's why yes. I mentioned the iPad. You know I mean? Last night we were talking to David Banner, um, yeah. who's also an incredible human being, an incredible producer. And when he found out that he asked you what you worked on, you said the iPad. He damn near spilled his drink. <laughs> 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 he, was, he, was, he was fucked up. But but the iPad so advanced, like I don't see why people don't understand. Like had some of the best. <laughs> it's like, Equipment in there, you know what I mean? You, you got all your, these functions. Get your, get your MPC for nine dollars on there. You get know your I mean? MP right, for nine dollars. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and then they make them huge now too. Yeah. So, yeah. Stop sleeping. You know what I mean? Stop sleeping on the iPad. The whole LA, the Wake whole LA beat, the, the whole LA beat uh, scene was doing that for years too. You know what I mean? Mm. So it was part. So of, it was nothing. Yeah, it wasn't just you. You saying? Yeah, I didn't start anything. You know what I mean? mm. Now you just dropped a project recently, um, Sound Ancestors, a uh, beautiful project. Came out at the Thank end you. of January. It's got incredible reviews. The Guardian Thank wrote, Mad Lib channels a deep interwining lineage of black music through Sound Ancestors, like folklore or oration, storytelling with the sorcery of a beat maker who knows how to make an instrumental really sing. What was your objective with that album? And what's the story you wanted to tell with the Sound Ancestors? Just different styles, basically. Instead of just just being like a hip hop album, I just wanted to show, you know, one song might be rock, prog rock. Next one is spiritual jazz. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of people can't get into it, you know, because I, I wanted to go too many different directions. But I just wanted mm-hmm. to show it in one album. You know what I mean? And the dude Fortet, who arranged the album, mm. I let him choose all the music. You know what I mean? Cause I wouldn't. I don't think I would have put it together like that. You know? mm. So I let him arrange the record mm. and all the songs he liked. He went through like five hundred songs, and that's just what he chose. It's important to have a good team. Yeah, people mm-hmm. you can trust. Yeah, yeah. he's Creative. a great DJ. We go record shopping, so I, I trust his, his ears and things. Yeah. Now speaking of DJing, uh, I told you last night that I'm a celebrity DJ, which means I have <laughs> carte blanche to make mistakes that other DJs who have to work for a living don't. And you mm-hmm. said something that I believe. You said it's really about the selection because I'll put my selection up there with any DJ, even if I don't got the technical skills uh, skills it's, for it. Um, it's all selection. You, yeah, it's all selection, right? And um, you talk about being a DJ first and producer second. And you also said to me, okay, now that you DJ in quality, you got to produce next. Um, what is it about DJing, particularly being a hip hop DJ, that leads into production? And and also, uh, have you been? De- you know, I know you DJed a lot. Before the uh, pandemic, what have you been doing since the pandemic? Since the pandemic, I've been doing the same thing. I've been, I've been at home before the pandemic. I stay home. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean, so this lockdown went, went nothing to me. I just, it just was able to do more music every day rather than traveling and stuff. Mm-hmm. And I, I recorded too, too many albums. You know what I mean? <laughs> too many. Like, right. People would trip. They know how much I record. It takes me two that two days to do an album. You know what I mean? Right, right, right. How did the How did the DJing lead to that though? How did the DJing lead to be like, okay, now I need to make these songs as opposed to just playing them? Because you know, if you can beat match, you know, it goes from there. I can beat match and okay. listen to sounds, put the, this together, with that together. So that's naturally leads into that. You know what I mean? mm-hmm. Eventually. So it's just matching the beat, just the actual. Foundation of hip hop, which is finding the break, finding the, yeah. the beep, where the BPMs match, matching that, and then and then you're taking, then you're off to the races from there, right? And then what you put together, yeah. Like if you're a good mm-hmm. DJ, selections, 
Yeah, you probably gonna be a good beat maker. Mm. Exactly, because as a DJ, you definitely need to know yeah. what can blend in well together, or what's gonna exactly. go right after, so you can know what. Like even with sampling, you'll know what songs to sample because of how you've been playing yeah. in the um. See, man, I, I could yeah. be a DJ too, Talib. I got the DJ yeah, no. hero, and now I got the background. No, see, now you, so now I'm you in there. With the DJ hero. That's okay, all right, all right. Go right, back to right, jazz right. flute. <laughs> <laughs> yes, okay, yes. So I can play my flute. <laughs> and then my father's actually a jazz, he's in a, a jazz band too. He plays every oh, drum. Really? So we already got that. My cousin does trombone and Mad Lib, we can come and join. I'm definitely. Your, uh, your, your production. <laughs> While we're on the topic of producing, <laughs> I had too much coffee. I think that's what it is. And I'm, now I'm all jittery. I'm just trying to force the words out. Um, can we get Mad Lib's top five producers? Oh, shit. Here we go. Top five. It's going to be hard. Yeah, that's a tough one. <laughs> I believe in you. Hmm. I'll tell you, my top three. I mean, of all course, right. King of the Beats. Number one is Dilla. Mm -hmm. Uh-oh. Pete Rock, mm. who I talk to all the time, every other day. So, uh, brother number one. And Knotts. Knotts. Ooh, we was so listening to that Knotts Buster last night. He's, he's so slept on, man. Uh, you just reminded me, I got to play you some of those unreleased Knotts joints I got. Oh, man, that's going to be... So that's my top three. Mm. Uh, you know, Talib, every time we ask somebody a top five question, do you know what I think of? Dylon, 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 <laughs> Dylon, Dylon. <laughs> Shout out to Chappelle Show. You can watch Chappelle Show again because Dave got his bag. Uh, so, and we're all better for it. We're all we're all yes, better for it yes. because Dave got a bag. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to Dylon. Yeah. I wonder what Dylon. That was one of my favorite episodes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, Chappelle's cool, man. Chappelle's yeah, he's, cool, he's good. You having cool a good brother, time, bro? Man. Yeah. Okay. I haven't been out a long time. It's great, man. This is your first time really it's out. And good seeing y'all. Miss my brothers, you know what I mean? It's good seeing you too, man. And I, I want to yeah. thank you for doing People's Party Mad Lib. I know for a fact that you like to be a mystery. I know for a fact that you like to let the music talk. So it's not lost on me what you're giving us right now. I, I, I highly appreciate the time and the energy you've given us to be on the People's Party. I want this show to document the culture. I always say this. I always say shout out to Combat Jack. And shout, rest in peace and rest in peace to yeah. Gil Noble and the people who have come before me in the journalist space because this is new for me. Everybody, people know me as an MC, people know me as a stage performer, but I want to get this journalism thing right. And, um, you know, not everybody gets to sit with Mad Lib and, and I, I truly appreciate you. The People's Party has a lot uh, of you. love and respect for our brother, the Loop Digger, <laughs> the Beat Conductor, Mad Lib, the Bad Kid. Give it up for Mad Lib. Thank Word you, bro. is gone. Anything for you, bro. Yeah, thank you so much. Salute. For real, bro. Thank you, guys. <laughs>